as soon as you graduate as a medical doctor, that is when the studies start. You go into a lot of research, you do a lot of personal studies, and build upon what you have learned over the years in your medical school. Welcome to Lincoln American University. So today, myself, Mr. Arun, one of our great personality in this, I would say, organization. He has been a wonderful friend. I have been looking for opportunity to shout to high heavens how this man has made a lot of things possible for me. So I really doff my cap for him. So myself, Mr. Arun, and some of the doctors who will be joining us on this program will first of all advise you on the need to be very serious with this. If you have not yet made up your mind, if you have not yet made up your mind to become a doctor, I think after this orientation, you should reassess yourself if this is the right place for you. You have your life, but to put your life on the line to take care of other people. This is something that is tremendous. It is not next to what the creator has ordained for us. So medical doctors are to be respected. But before people respect medical doctors, doctors have to respect themselves. They have to carry themselves in certain manners. They have to um, stick to certain code of conduct. As a medical doctor, you are looked up to in the society with certain kind of behavior as a medical doctor. We know we're human beings, we're not machines, we're not robots, but we try as much as possible to lead the way and set the pace for other people, for other professions. Because on the line and the hierarchy of all professions in the world, the medical doctor or the, med the medical profession comes first on that line. On the pyramid of professions in the world, the medical profession comes on top. And the only reason why the medical profession comes on top is because we give meaningful life to other people. We put our life on the line for other people. Take, for example, the doctors who have been on the line in this COVID-19 period. Many of them have contracted the disease just because they want to help other people. So we should be ready for this. It is not an easy profession. There is a lot of work to be done, a lot of studies. You can see behind me, I still have my books on my shelf. Even as a medical doctor, the studies continue. It doesn't stop. It doesn't stop at all. There is no time in the life of a medical doctor you would say, okay, now is the time for me to rest. No. And I'm going to be very, very serious about this. This is what I tell most of my students when they come here. There are lots of distractions, so many distractions personal distractions, the WhatsApp is there, the Facebook is there, the Instagram is there. I don't know how many social medias that we have, but we have quite a number of them. I, I don't know many of them. I know Facebook, yes. I know, Inst no, well, I know Instagram, but I am not part of Instagram. I also know WhatsApp. I think these are the ones, so I belong to WhatsApp and Facebook. And I try most, as much as possible not to get myself involved in the other streams of social media. They are forms of distractions for you. Now, in this profession, the medical profession is very, very jealous. You know, have you seen a jealous wife? I could tell you that. You know, so the medical profession is very, very jealous. It doesn't want you to do other things. It just wants you to love him or love her and be with her all the time. That's the medical profession. So you have volumes of things to study. The curriculum that we are going to be choosing or doing for you guys is the organ system based curriculum. You are the first badge that we're going to be starting the organ system based curriculum with. All the students, we have students presently in MD4. We use the traditional based curriculum but you are the guys that we're going to be starting the organ system based curriculum. And I'm going to show you guys what the organ system based curriculum looks like before the end of this, right? Now, 
there are not a lot of schools in the world that adapt the organ system-based curriculum. Most schools are too naive, or I would say they are reluctant to start the organ system-based curriculum. But with the help of some of the personalities we have here, we have been able to take this big stride to start up the organ system-based curriculum for this batch. You guys are the most luckiest species on the surface of the earth. All right, so it's gonna really work. Um, uh, and I'm assuring you all that it's gonna be one of the most fantastic and fun reading uh, experience in your medical career. Now back to what we are saying, I was trying to give you an overview of what it means to be a doctor, a medical doctor. Like we say, there are two professions in the world medical doctors and others. Those are the two professions we have in the world. Um, the road and journey to this is that you have to prepare yourself psychologically. That is the first thing you have to do. Prepare yourself psychologically. You have to mentally prepare yourself. Am I ready for this journey? Do I have the required uh, materials to drive me all through this journey. So the first thing is to prepare yourself mentally. There are times here where you'll be so broken, you'll be so, you know, tired, you just want to break out of this profession because you have streams of tests coming in, you have quizzes coming in, assignments and presentations coming in and out. Sometimes your grades may not be as good as you want them to, do, to be you'll be frustrated at some point, you'll be depressed at some point, but don't give up. That is where your mental state is very important now. If you have a poor and weak foundation, you may break out of this profession at some point. But if you have made up your mind and tell yourself, no matter what happens, I'm gonna see, I wanna see myself as a medical doctor hanging the stethoscope over my neck and then the lab coat, I want to see myself in five years from now, you know, being addressed as a medical doctor. You definitely are on the path to becoming a doctor. So you have to prepare yourself. The other thing is know that courses like anatomy, physiology, biochemistry are things you have to complete in your first year. So you don't have so much luxury of time to mind yourself with things that are not important. People used to say that doctors don't have social life. They do. But our social life, when we are involved in social life, we have our books by our side. I used to remember then when we were in school, medical school, right? And we have tests or quiz and there is a party. You know, we have our books. You see the medical students with their books, flipping through their books while they're in the party. So that happens. So there is no time you leave your book your books has to be with you. And sometimes again, some medical students complain that they read and they forget. That is natural. You read and you forget. It is natural. It's the brain, people. The brain is made up of neurons. And these neurons are connected with each other. You have to train your brain to master certain things. I'll give you an example. Um, a child is born, the brain is clear, it's wide, there's nothing in, the, in that brain. The child has to learn how to walk, has to learn how to speak, has to learn how to do things. Now, you see that for that child to learn how to walk, that child's brain is connecting neurons to neurons. So, it takes a while for those neurons to be connected. And then you begin to walk without even thinking you're walking because those neurons have been connected. Similarly, when you want to learn new things in your life, say you want to learn new names in medicine, you have to connect those neurons. So if you see a new name, for example, a muscle like the stenocladomastoid, 
muscle, which is a muscle that runs from the mastoid bone and is attached to the clavicle, the medial end of the clavicle. You know, for the first time you hear that name, it's strange, You're like, wow, what's this? But I tell you, don't let that scare you. And the same thing with many other names in medicine, there are jaw broken names. And some, con some concepts in medicine that are strange to you. All you need to do is to continuously repeat those words over and over to connect those neurons. That is all, that is what it is. If you read and you forget, go back again and read it because the neurons have not been connected. You have a test, do not start a week to the test to write, to read for that test. Start from the very moment the semester starts. That's when you have to start preparing for all the tests and quiz and exams. Some students wait until it is a day to the quiz or to the test. That's when they start to read and they become overwhelmed with so much information and they become so confused and they do poorly. My advice is when you start the program from the very first day of the program, that's when you start to acquaint yourself with all the information so that when the bell for quiz is rung, you don't need, you don't have so much to do, right? You don't have so much to do. So all you need to do is to put yourself together and put your materials together. And when you study, when you read these things, you connect all the neurons together. So remember that there are about 100 billion neurons in the brain. And there's so much you can learn. We don't even use one tenth of these much of neurons we don't, we, in our life, in our entire life. We don't use up, up to one tenth of that. So you have a huge, a huge cascade of neurons in your brain. And there is no particular student. Some people say this particular student is gifted and I am not gifted. I don't wanna believe that. Everybody is gifted in their own special way. Some people think that I am not good enough. You don't have to be the most excellent student to become a medical doctor. The profession is not meant for people who are genius or who are the best in terms of their memory. They have big memory. No, that's not what, that's medical profession is not meant for those people alone. It is meant for hardworking students. Students who don't relent, who when they fail, they stand up again and say, no, I'm going to make it. Most doctors, most medical doctors are average students. Quote me anyway, I am an average student when I was a medical student. But one thing that I promised myself is I will never let anything to bring me down. You have to study your books. That is sure for everybody. So it is a, a profession that is not meant for people who are excellent, but it is meant for people who are hardworking who don't relent, who when they forget, they say, no, I'm gonna go back again and look at that material. Even if it means you're looking at that material a hundred times. Look at that material a hundred times. Don't say, oh, I am getting frustrated. I looked at this, I read this this morning, I have forgotten to no, know what is wrong with me. You are okay. You don't need to take any drugs. You don't need to take any special food. Some students have come to meet me and tell me, so how do you remember everything in anatomy? When you teach anatomy, you just feel like everything just coming out from your head. I said, because it's been years of practicing. All of those things didn't come into my head. At one time, there were times when I was struggling with those stops. I was struggling with them. But now it just comes out because I have connected all the neurons. So the more time and energy you put into connecting these neurons, the earlier and better it will be for these neurons to be connected. So it means here, what I'm trying to say is that the brain should not be distracted. Don't distract your brain so much with Instagram, people. Don't distract your brain so much with Facebook. I know there are also means in which we can socialize, but there is a limit to our socialization. The older doctors will tell you that. There is a limit to your socialization. Now, 
there are some very specific things you have to know and you have to know them. That is where your memory comes into play. For example, specific doses in pediatric patients. If a specific dose is meant for a specific pediatric patient according to the weight of that patient, you have to remember the formula or else if you give anything more than that, you're going to, you're going to jeopardize the life of that patient. You're definitely going to jeopardize. So the profession is a profession that requires skills and carefulness. You cannot be on your phone while you're clocking a patient. While you're looking after a patient, you cannot be, be on your phone. You cannot be trying to text a message to somebody, irrespective of who the person is, while you're taking care of a patient because distractions may come in. That is why the profession is a profession for people who are very careful. If you find yourself being very uncareful with certain things in your life, this is a time where you have to train yourself, folks. It's a profession that requires you to be very disciplined. Discipline in all ramification. Discipline in terms of your personal health and, and, and hygiene. We have students, names not to be mentioned, that they are going to be doctors, but when they come near you, that's what you do. I'm serious. They're, done, they're going to be doctors, but when they come close to you, you put your hands on your nose because of the stench that comes from them. We have to, the way we take care of ourselves tells so much the way we're going to take care of others. You have to be, you have to be grounded. You have to be completely grounded, right? So um, I'm trying to see at the same time if we have um, Dr. Roseanne. I invited Dr. Roseanne to this. Let me see. Give me one minute. I invited Dr. Roseanne, Dr. Stephanie. These are Dr. Roseanne is, is um, a clinician here at the Jotun Public Hospital. And um, he's a gynecologist, a consultant gynecologist, a young man. I would like him to give us his experience as a medical doctor, a brief experience as a medical doctor. I guess maybe he's in, in the theater because I sent this message to him earlier, but let me find out if he's in the theater. Anyway, before those guys join in, because Dr. Roseanne says he's gonna join, Dr. Stephanie is gonna join. So I, I wanna take you guys through uh, what we mean by when we say the organ system. I want you guys to look at this. This is, um, Proposal to introduce the integrated organ system based curriculum and USMLE coaching center at USMLE, which has been approved. And um, the good news is we're starting you guys with this. So, what this means is that um, in the, in the, back in the days, we operate a traditional system. A traditional, there are two types of systems in which medicine can be studied. Up until 2000, um, the medical confraternity, the medical education board decided that um, medicine should be studied um, systematically. So many schools started adopting that system, but it's very difficult for many schools. In the Caribbean, we have just a few schools that have adopted the um, organ, uh, the organ system curriculum, based curriculum. So we are probably, I would say the first in the, in Guyana to um, want to start this system in, at this period. And we're, we're, we're starting it with you guys. So this here, you're seeing on my screen. Can everybody see my screen? Can you see my screen? Yeah, so. All right, good. So, this is a um, system-based course schedule, the first year MD1, which is your, your, your badge. Uh, it's gonna run for 18 weeks. These are the course code. 
We're starting with the cardiovascular system, and this is the credit hours. So before you would see or hear things like anatomy, physiology, biochemistry, and all of that pathology, now, which are studied separately. Anatomy is a cause that is studied separately. Physiology is a cause that is, se that is studied separately. But in this system, we're gonna look at the cardiovascular system. So for the first four weeks, you guys will be looking at the cardiovascular system alone. After we're done with the cardiovascular system, we go into the respiratory system. And here we have other courses like the clinical biochemistry, um, cell and tissue structure and function, which is histology, embryology too. Now this is embryology too, because in your PM, you did embryology one. Here at Lincoln American University in Guyana campus, we would have exposed our students to the first eight weeks of embryonic development which is the fetal life, or which is the embryonic life, sorry. The embryonic life from the day one preconception to post-conception, first week, second week, third week, all the way to the ninth week, the students would have been exposed to what is happening to the sperm and the ovum. And after that, what is happening, a zygot is formed and then a morola is formed and then there is implantation and then, in, in the second week, what is going on? You have a bilaminal disc that is formed. In the third week, you have a trilaminal disc and the primitive streak is formed. All of that you have to understand. And that continues into the fourth week where there's organogenesis. And then the fifth week, some limbs are formed. And this 11th, sorry, in the, in the seventh week, some organs are formed. So all of these, you have to learn, you have to understand. Now here in embryology too, it is more of systemic embryology. And this will be connected to, since we are doing cardiovascular system, you do cardiovascular system embryology, how the, um, the cardiovascular system is developed. Now here we have practice of medicine. Practice of medicine PM, POM will be clinical examination of the cardiovascular system. Okay, good. Now the same thing applies to respiratory system. The cardiovascular system will deal with the anatomy of the cardiovascular system, the physiology of the cardiovascular system, the histology of the cardiovascular system, and the pathology of the cardiovascular system. All of this you'll be doing. Now let me show you, for you to understand exactly what I am saying, let me run through that. So in your MD2, you do muscular skeletal system and the nervous system. And then you do your medical pharmacology, medical genetics and all of that. In your MD, MD3, yeah, in your MD3, you do your gastrointestinal tract system, immune blood lymphatic system, and you continue with all of this. And finally, in your MD4, you're doing your endocrine system, reproductive system, and of course, the urinary system. Now here we have MD5. This may sound a little bit strange to some of you, and that is why I want to introduce it as early as possible so that you do not begin to complain later on, that I wasn't told that it's five semesters. Now, it is not different from what we have been doing. At present, it is four semesters, but the numbers of weeks has not changed. The numbers of weeks is um, 80 weeks. We're still running 80 weeks with four semester. It means that each week will be, each semester will be 20 weeks, 20 weeks for each semester, which is about five months for each semester. So what I did is to slash off each week by two weeks. So we have 18 weeks, 18 weeks, 18 weeks. When you multiply 18 weeks by four, you get 72. The remaining eight weeks is um, our fifth semester. Although 
the vice chancellor is suggesting that we make it 20 weeks, which would be more than 80 weeks. Now, these 20 weeks of five semester, the fifth semester is preparation for United States of America licensing exam, USMLE, step one, and prepping you for your clinical rotation. Before you start your clinical rotation, we don't want to just push you all into the hospital like that. That's not what we want to do. We want to give you some amount of exposure. We want to give you some amount of exposure to what being in the hospital feels like. And I'm speaking from example. What most schools do is that immediately after the, um, the, the MD1, MD2, MD3, and MD4, they just put all the students into the hospital. Now, that is some kind of a nervous breakdown for most students seeing the hospital set setting. I experienced that because everybody you've seen around you is people with stethoscope, lab coats, the smell of the hospital, you know, of morphine, of, uh, of different kind of spirits and the rest of them. So it is somehow very challenging for many students. So what we, what we decided to do is to pre-expose you to health centers. In Guyana, there are lots of health centers, which is the primary health centers. So we, we, we take you to a primary health center where you have less patients, less doctors, and less seen. So that's like preparing your mind into the big hospital. So that when you get into the hospital, you would not be confused and the chances of making a lot of mistakes would be reduced. So that is why we decided that we are going to keep these fifth semester for you to do your USMLE coaching and prep you for your clinical rotation. All right. Now, this is a timetable, but I have modified this timetable. And I'm going to show you the timetable that we have. Good afternoon, everyone. Good afternoon, Dr. Joshua. Good afternoon, sir. Thank you very much for joining Dr. Joshua. Dr. Joshua is one of uh, our lecturers here. He lectures anatomy. And um, he will be also speaking to all of you um, concerning his experience as a medical doctor. I have not seen Dr. This is Dr. Stephanie here. Okay. Hey, Dr. Not, Abdullah. Yes, I'm here. Oh, Dr. Stephanie, thank Hi, you. Dr. Good Stephanie morning, is also everyone. a medical doctor here, so she would also be sharing some of her experience here as a medical doctor with all of you. So while I'm searching for the timetable, I would allow Dr. Dr. Joshua to you know, share a brief of his experience, maybe five or 10 minutes of his experience as a medical doctor and what it takes, what do you need, what it takes to becoming a doctor. Uh, Dr. Joshua, the floor is open. Thank you. <clears throat> Thank you, Dr. Abdullah. I'm sorry, um, <laughs> I was just trying to grab something to bite. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> anyway, um, good afternoon, guys. Good afternoon. Good afternoon, yeah, sir. Good afternoon, sir. Yeah. I don't think we have, um, it looks like everyone is um, people we're familiar with, so I don't think I'll have to turn on my video. Anybody here that doesn't know Dr. Joshua? Yeah, we have new students, a lot of new students who are here. I think there are about 20 of them or more. So I oh, guess okay. it's important that you turn on your video and I All hope right. you're dressing properly. Yeah, always, all the time. All right. Yeah. Yeah, that's I'm the man of the moment. <laughs> okay. Yes. Um, good afternoon, guys. Uh, for the interest of those who are um, new students, um, welcome to um, the family, LAU family. And for the other guys, um, you guys already know me. So, um, Dr. Abdullah wants me to talk about my experience as um, 
a medical doctor, I think that's what you mentioned, and also what it takes to be um, a medical doctor. Well, um, I haven't had a, a whole lot of experience as a medical doctor, but I've had a, a whole lot of experience as a student, not just a medical student, um, a whole lot of experience as a student. Uh, so I think that's going to be the bedrock of my, um, my speech. And um, I think um, you would have to be um, a very good student, first and foremost, if you're planning to be um, a very good medical doctor. Um, the best medical doctors were not always the best students, so don't get me wrong. But I think it's a it's a good point for you to start in your in your you know journey to becoming a medical doctor. Now, and before I start, um, I just hope that all of us here. Our, our um, Hi, in this profession because you want to be I here, not, um, right? That has to be the first thing. Um, you don't want um, to be in this profession if someone is forcing you to be in here. You don't want to be in this profession if you think, you know, you're coming because there is money because <laughs> there's no money in it, all right? You don't want to be in this profession if you're lazy. And I mean the whole meaning of that word, all right? You don't want to be in this profession. It still defines the same thing if you're not ready to put in the work. It's a whole lot of work, all right? You're in here, it's like you're here, you're going to be a student forever. That's what people say, you know? Because um, the medications that were used in the 80s, the medications, some of them that were used in the 90s, some technological developments that were useful five years ago, there's been a massive development, there's been a massive migration from that to what we have now. So what does this mean? If you have to be relevant to the age, if you have to be relevant to the time, you have to, you know, move along. And how do you move along? You have to continue study. You have to continue staying, you know, up to date. And this means you have to, you know, look at the books, follow up what's happening because if they say, oh, this medication has this side effect, a lot of people died for it, and you do not know, you keep prescribing that medication, well, depending on where you're practicing your, your medicine, let's like the United States where everybody wants to go, you might find yourself in a very bad um, situation. So um, going back to that point, if you are ready, Morning, Dr. Hunt. You? if you're ready not to be very rich, if you're ready not to you know, have a whole lot of time for yourself, if you're ready to be a student for the rest of your life, and most importantly, if you are ready to make the sacrifice for humanity, you're in the right place. Do not quote me wrong. I'm not saying medicine is the wrong, is, is the worst profession, no. It's very fulfilling, you know, depending on what you want. You know, if, you, if, you, if you're like me, you like when a patient walks into your office, has a problem, the next few days, you see them, they're smiling, they tell you, oh, thank you, the family greets you. If you take joy from that, you know, I'm not talking about pride, if you take joy from that, if you take satisfaction from things like that, then you're welcome, all right? But like I said, it's a whole lot of work. So going back to what it takes, I've been a student for a very long time. And the simple word for it is you have to put in the work. Okay, you have to put in the work. When I was in medical school, one of my professors, he's late now, he used to tell us the only time you have is for you to eat. I mean, outside of, you know, studying, the only other time you have is to eat, exercise. The rest should be put into your studies. Now, times have changed, things have changed. People want to catch up on their latest uh, TV series. People want to, you can't be like your colleagues studying um, theater arts. You can't be like your sister doing um, engineering. You can't be like the other person doing um, uh, communication art, all right? The workload is very different, okay? So it therefore means that you have to put in the time. You have to study, all right? The lecturers, irrespective of whatever university you're going to. If you leave LAU today, 
um, go to another university, be in the United States, be in the United United Arab Emirates, you come back to Guyana. There is no medical school where anybody's going to spoon feed you. By spoon feeding, I mean taking care of you like a baby. You sit in there, open your mouth, they feed you, your pambas is full, they change for you. No, you're not gonna get anything like that anyway. To make that simple, it means you have to do a whole lot of your personal studies. That's the reason why you have recommended textbooks. There's no lecturer that is going to go line by line in all the textbooks, even though you have that long duration in medical studies. So it means that you have to put in a whole lot of work, right? That's the reason why we have um, crosses, cross outlines, or the reason why we have schedules. So you look at what you have to cover within a certain period of time. Your lecturer is going to come in. Some lecturers do lecturing. You have to know that there's a stark difference between lecturing and teaching. Some lecturers are going to lecture you, touch on the key points and the rest of the work is yours. Some people would teach you, but in medical school, you can't be taught everything because it's too much of stuff. You have to do the bulk of thing for yourself, okay? So um, that is one of the things you have to remember or to have at the back of your, of, of your head. Um, another thing I want to talk about is um, one conception that a whole lot of people have um, about being um, a successful medical doctor. I said it earlier, being a very good student does not mean you're going to be a very good medical doctor. When you begin to go into a practice, it is it, it cuts across, you know, just reading things in the books and remembering them to pass examination. All right. You have to have a perfect um, matrimony. You have to have a perfect transition of what you understand theoretically to what can be done practically. And um, I hope in, in, in another forum, all right, I might have a better time to expand on some more of this thing, but um, I would believe that I probably would have pointed on one or two things that you know would have been of interest to you. So I don't wanna to take too much time um, I'm going to leave now and give the floor back to Dr. Abdullah. And um, like I said, hopefully in another forum, I might be able to speak some more. All right. Thank you. Thank you so much, Dr. Joshua. Um, no before I allow Dr. Stephanie to speak, I want uh, Dr. Benjamin Ruth Huntley to speak for like three minutes. She is a great doctor here. She was my teacher. And um, she's been in the practice for for years now, and um, I think she, she's going to really inspire a lot of us. Um, Dr. Huntley, good afternoon. You're welcome, Dr. Huntley. I guess she's she's actually seen a patient. She told me she has just three minutes because she's in the clinic seeing a patient. So. Um, <laughs> I think her microphone is muted. Yeah. All right. Let Dr. Me tell Huntley, you. can you unmute yourself? Good. You're yeah. hearing me now. Yeah, we yes. can hear you, Dr. Huntley. Great. First of all, I'm going to welcome everyone of the new students um, to LAU. I can't even find my picture now. <laughs> but you can hear me, can't you? We can hear we you. Can, we can see you too. You see me? I'm not seeing myself. <laughs> <laughs> okay, okay. I'm glad that you're seeing me. Anyhow, um, it is such a joy to be able to enter this profession known as medicine. Now, each and every one of you would have known your specific reasons. My reasons may not be yours, but I believe that the reasons that pushed you to walk this way is a fulfillment of a dream that you may have had not maybe a dream that you may have had since you were very small or even more recently. Now, if you have a dream to fulfill something in your life, it means therefore then that you need to be focused. It means you must be prepared to put in the work that's necessary so that your dreams will be fulfilled. Medicine and learning the program is not an easy journey. There are going to be challenges. There are going to be challenges with the schoolwork. There may be challenges with the lecturers that you deal with because each and every one of us is a different personality and so are you. There may be challenges with 
situations that may develop at home. And as a result of that, you may find yourselves under some degree of emotional stress or strain. There may be challenges even with your own health. You're in a different country. You're in a different environment. But what I need to tell you is that at LAU, you're going to find a team of doctors who would be your lecturers. You'll find a team of staff members who are always willing to go the extra mile to help you to settle in, to help you with your schoolwork, and to help you even with your problems. I find it a joy teaching you all because as Dr. Abdullah said, I have been teaching for a little while and therefore I look upon my students, not as students, I basically look upon you all as my children or even grandchildren, depending on how old you are. And therefore the relationship that we have with you is always one to encourage you to go the extra mile to pull out the very best that you have in you, to enable you to recognize that there's nothing to fear. No matter how strong the challenge may be to you, it may not be such a big thing that you cannot get help. We are so thankful for the privilege and the honor to be able to be a part of your lives because this is going to be at least three, four years of your lives you'll be spending with us, meeting with us, talking and interacting with us. I would also like to encourage you to build up healthy relationships among yourselves so that not only can we as lecturers be there to help you, but you are there to help each other, to help and guide each other. Be prepared to do your work. One of the things with medicine is it is a lot of work. I'm not going to exclude that fact. You do have to have time for relaxation, for reading, for games or whatever it is. But your primary focus at this time is always to ensure that you do the work that is given to you and required of you. As I said before, our um, Dean, Dr. Abdullah and the staff are always there to help. We never turn anyone away. Enjoy the work. Although it's hard work, enjoy the process. Have fun. Build up healthy relationships with, among yourself and your staff members. And remember always to keep your dream alive. To remember always to be willing to take that extra step, that go that extra mile. And at the end of the journey, it has always been said that the best part of any journey is not the end of the journey when you have actually held your degree and your certificate in your hand. The best part of the journey is the process that you will begin it, that you will be beginning now and will end in a few years time. Make sure you enjoy the process, even as you seek to succeed. And may the Lord bless you all. In Jesus name. Amen. Thank you very much. I mean, thank you so much, Dr. Huntley. That was really, really inspiring. I am also inspired by those words. Thank you thank so you, much. Doctor. Thank you, Dr. Abdullah. All right. Um, I have to leave you now because I have to see to this young man who walked in, but it's a pleasure speaking with you all. All right. Thank you so much. Go ahead, Dr. Huntley. Thank you. Um, so I would allow Dr. Stephanie to give us a few words of advice. Dr. Stephanie is a colleague and she is a lecturer at Lincoln American University. Dr. Stephanie, please make yourself seen by yeah, all the students. Good. Thank you. Dr. Stephanie. Yeah. Hi, Dr. Stephanie. Hey, yes, I'm here. I had some internet issues. I got knocked off. Oh, thank you. So please would like to, I know you have a beautiful picture right there, but would like to see your face. Thank you. Really? No problem. Okay. Um, Thank you. All right. Yes. So we want some words of advice from you, Dr. Stephanie, um, to the students. Make it very brief. I didn't get that. Possible. Sorry. Um, Dr. Han Dr. Hanuman is there. So I didn't hear you, Dr. Abdul. All right. Okay. Well, firstly, I'd like to say congratulations to all the students that are 
transitioning over into the MD class now. Um, keep up the good work, guys. Dr. Stephanie, we lost you there. I think she has some um, internet issues. Yeah, I think she has some internet issues. All right, so we would allow Dr. Hanuman to, we would allow Dr. Hanuman to give us, first of all, Dr. Hanuman is one of our doctors here. He is a, he, lec he lectures neuroscience, um, practice of medicine. I mean, he is one man too many. And um, he completed his medical education in the UK and has done a lot of programs and research. So he's somebody I guess who is gonna inspire so many of us. Dr. Hanuman, the floor is open for you. Hi, good morning, everybody. Uh, well, welcome to LAU. And uh, just briefly, medicine is, is could be interesting and it, you get out of it what you put into it. So if you want to enjoy the course, uh, you put in the effort and you will actually uh, get the rewards. It's one of those courses, you, you, you get out what you put into it, right? So, so that's the first thing, you know, you need to, you need to you work hard. And, and if you understand the concept as opposed to cramming as well, you will actually enjoy the course, right? So uh, the way I teach is by understanding, right? Understanding concepts, you break it down into very small little bits and you understand it. that way you retain it and that way you enjoy how the body works, right? So uh, as opposed to just learning stuff by uh, rote, by just cramming it, that way you don't really appreciate it and you don't really get satisfaction. Anything you just learn like a, like a poem, you will never really get satisfaction. You gotta, you gotta understand it. So put in the effort and try to understand. Those are the two things that I would sort of go by in medical school. So put in the effort and try to understand. Both of them are important. Not just the effort, but you also have to understand. And if you do those two things, you will actually find the course very enjoyable. And, uh, and we're like a little family here at LAU, as a, you know, we're all fairly close. And we try to support each other. I mean, of course, um, uh, that's the best way for us to, you know, to function, right? We all get along well, and we, even occasionally we get disagreements, but, uh, but, um, but we're a family basically, and we try to help each other and support each other, right? So, so welcome again, and uh, as I said, you will enjoy the course, and um, we have many different lecturers from different parts of the world as well. So you get a good um, experience from different um, parts, you know. So uh, input from all over the world. So uh, that's another good thing as well. So we can get all the ideas from different parts, right? All right. So look forward to um, teaching you, and um, and welcome again to LAU. All right. Thank you very much, Dr. Hanuman, for those words of advice and inspiration. Uh, we've heard from these doctors. Um, I have tried to get back again to Dr. Rosan. He told me he is busy and uh, right. will not be able to make it. So uh, thank you, Dr. Hanuman. All right, take care. Okay, bye. All the All best. Right. Okay, take care. Okay, bye. Right. Thank you. Um, so uh, let me share this with you guys. Uh, let me share the uh, the timetable, our timetable. All right, good. So we have uh, the timetable right in front of everybody. We're saying system-based curriculum, cardiovascular system module. That's going to run for four weeks, MD1, first semester. That's you guys. So on Mondays, um, embryology will be looked, the lecturer who lectures embryology will come in and will teach you the embryology of the heart. And then the lecturer who teaches anatomy will come and teaches, he will teach you the gross anatomy of the heart. So that would be on the structure and function of the heart. And then you have your break, you go eat whatever you have for lunch, and then you come back and when, then we do a clinical biochemistry. The clinical biochemistry will be your general clinical biochemistry, right? It's not probably gonna be related to your heart, but things that have to do with your clinical biochemistry. And then here, the last that we have 
for Monday, we have physiology of the heart. So we, you're get definitely gonna be provided with course outline for each of these courses. So you see on Monday, everything that you would have done is related to the heart. And that is why that week is called cardiovascular system. On Tuesday, we continue with physiology of the heart, structure and function, and we do histology, and we're gonna be looking at cardiac tissues. And here we have general pathology. So general pathology will be dealing with the general pathology on, on the whole. So where you'll be looking at apoptosis and uh, all the different types of uh, inflammations and all of that. On Wednesday, we continue with biochemistry, clinical biochemistry, medical pharmacology. And so you see everything that you're doing in this week from Monday through Friday, it's gonna be dealing with the heart. At the end of that week on Friday, you have a quiz. And this quiz will be dealing with only what has been taught. So embryology will give you a quiz. So this day, this, this period will be quiz because it is Zoom, all right? We're gonna see how we can squeeze 10 minutes squeeze, just 10 minutes. So 10 minutes for all the courses you have done. So you, an hour probably will be enough, 10 minutes squeeze. So I make it be 10 minutes squeeze. Embryology will give a quiz um, for everything that has been done on embryology that has to do with the heart, okay? And then we continue this will run for another four weeks. Cardiovascular system again will run for another four weeks. So here we have, because you have done the basics of cardiovascular system, the anatomy and the physiology, you, you have some ideas. Now you want to engage yourself in cardiovascular pathology. You know, we have different kinds of diseases of the heart. Some of, the, some of them like heart failure, what are some of the causes of heart failure? It could be embryological, it could be um, embryological, it could be physiological, it could be anatomy that is causing the heart failure. And here you have the cardiovascular pharmacology, and then here you have your general pathology and medical pharmacology. So we continue again, general pathology. And here on Tuesday, between the hours of 10 to 12, you're doing cardiovascular system examination. So in this, in this um, period, we probably would have a simulated patient. Uh, and this will be on the practice of medicine by Dr. Hanuman. Uh, we have a simulated patient or we have a real patient. We have a skills lab where students will be exposed to how to carry out a physical examination on a patient with cardiovascular um, complications or cardiovascular problems. So this is going to kind of integrate everything you have done here, how to generate um, your differential diagnosis and how to clock a patient, how to do your history, your history of the presenting illness and all of that will fall under this. And that will continue all the way till the end of the week and then you do a quiz. And this quiz will kind of bring out everything that you have done. So this will run for another four weeks, which is eight weeks. Now, at the end of that, we would have completed the whole of cardiovascular system in eight weeks. Now, the other weeks, like in the ninth week, we're gonna do your respiratory system. So this becomes the respiratory system module. And the respiratory system will run for eight weeks, right? That will run for eight weeks. So eight weeks plus eight weeks gives you 16 weeks. The remaining two weeks will be revision and exam, final exam. That makes it 18 weeks. Guys, this, um, there's a lot of work that was put into this to to bring this out. And uh, I want you guys to take this very seriously. All the lecturers are gonna take this very seriously. Like every person who has spoken to you, one thing that is clear from everything that everybody has spoken about is hard work. Concentrate on your work. It pays at the end of the day. So there are virtually no time for, you know, you have time for other stuff, but 
I mean, you got to give a lot of priority to some of these, most of these things we have here, all right? So this is the timetable you will be using for your MD1, your entire MD1. I'm going to share this timetable with all of you. In addition to that, um, your program is supposed to start, lectures are going to start on the 10th, on the 10th of December. So you have your lectures. I'm going to share also your course outline. I will share course outline for embryology, for gross anatomy, clinical biochemistry, and then you prepare yourself before then. All right. Any question? Any question? If you have questions or concerns, what are some of your, con your concern? I think good this morning, is the sir. media where you can share those questions. Yes, please. Yes. Uh, good morning, sir. My name is Nashra. Nashra, uh, how are you? Yeah, I'm good. I'm fine. Actually, I had a little doubt regarding yeah, this organ system based curriculum. Okay. Want you to know the reason why we are studying this curriculum or the benefit of this curriculum? Because, as you said, not many universities use this curriculum. All right. So, Nashra wants to know what is the benefit, right? Of you know, uh, switching to the organ system based curriculum. Okay. The benefit of this is to help to integrate all the different um, courses in, in medicine. Integration is very important because, um, for example, the traditional system which was a system or which is a system we were using before, you, the lecturer comes into the class, for example, you have anatomy. He comes into the class and he teaches um, anatomy of the, let's say, upper limb. Okay, he starts with upper limb. So you begin to study upper limb, you're doing things about the upper limb, the muscles of the upper limb, the nerve supply of the upper limb, the blood supply and the venous drainage of the upper limb and the lymphatic drainage of the upper limb. You complete that. Say you do that for two hours on Monday. The next lecturer comes in, he's gonna be taking you, say for example, physiology. And he starts with um, cell, cellular physiology. It teaches you cell physiology. Now, the thing here is what the lecturer who came in the morning between eight to 12 would have taught has no integration with what the lecturer that had come after that taught. There are no linkage. The lecturer who came in the morning taught muscles, bones, and uh, blood supply and, um, nerve supply and venous drainage of the upper limb and the names of these muscles. So you, you, you train yourself or you're busy trying to understand these muscles, insertion and origin of these muscles and the names of these muscles, the actions of these muscles and all of that in terms of upper limb. And the lecturer who came later on to discuss cell physiology, there are no integration, it's as if these two persons have just come, to, of course they came to teach different things, but you seem not to find a link between the two of them. And this is how medicine has been taught. Now, scholars in the medical profession would have done a lot of studies and find out that the best way is to see how all the lecturers integrate whatever they teach. So they begin to start doing system-based instead of doing the organ instead of doing, doing it separately. So you take a system and study the entire system, and then you are able to link the whole thing together. So you're able to link physiology of the cardiovascular system with anatomy of the cardiovascular system, and then the pathology of the cardiovascular system, and of course, the biochemistry of the cardiovascular system. And then you begin to see clearly the different puzzles, how they link together. The big picture is now clearer, all right? Instead of the, tr the traditional system that, you know, you're struggling with trying to understand what is the link between this and that, 
you know so this system helps you to clearly see without difficulty you know how these systems are linked with each other all right i what's her name did do you understand the explanation i just gave yes sir i did thank you all right i don't know if dr 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 joshua has something to say with regards to that um <clears throat> I think um Dr. Abdullah, um thanks for I think you've you've pretty much covered um everything. Um I don't think there's any better way to put it, but since you called me, I'm just gonna say it. Um not sure. So like Dr. Abdullah said, I'm going to try to use another example in case there's another person who doesn't have a good understanding. So say you learn about the upper limbs in the morning, you learn about the bones and the muscles. Another lecturer comes in in the afternoon and teaches you how about how those muscles developed that would be under embryology all right tells you about how those bones developed that would be under embryology maybe later in the day another lecturer comes in and tells you how those muscles do their job how they contract how they relax that would be physiology and so on and so forth so at the end of the week you would have had a holistic knowledge of a specific area of the body so that's the advantage of this. So let's take it to another point. So if we're doing, um, I don't know, let's say um, the lungs, for example. So one lecturer comes in and tells you how the lungs developed. So that would be embryology. Another one comes in later and tells you, you know, about the anatomy of the lungs, its location, the lobes, and all those things, the, 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 the pulmonary tree, you learn that information. Another one comes in, tells you about um, how they how how they work you know or you break down the trees from here so that is how it is so at the end of the week you have a holistic information the concept is more holistic in comparison to what we had before you know it's a whole lot of mixture very challenging you know so that's the advantage for for um this um pattern we're using thank you dr joshua um, is there any person who who did not understand the concept? And by the way, um, it's not that this system we 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 want to follow <clears throat> with you guys is um, it's something that is coming from us. It is the CAMHP requirements, the Caribbean Accreditation um, Body. Um, has required that all medical schools follow the system-based curriculum. All right, so the earlier we begin to start training ourselves to follow the system-based curriculum, I think the better it would be. For me, I think it's a brilliant idea uh, that you know medical education should be studied systematically instead of the old traditional way that we learned it. The system will give you a broader understanding of each of the system and you're able to understand it and you'll be able to uh, because when patients come to you patients come to you with a systemic disease there is no patient that comes to you and tell you that okay i i have a heart disease and it's just the heart the heart is part of a system it's part of us of the cardiovascular system so if a patient comes to you and is complaining of a chest pain, for example, there are so many things that can cause, cause chest pain. So you want to start thinking of heart disease. So heart disease is not isolated. There are certain things that cause heart disease. It could be a diabetic patient. It could be a hypertensive patient. Hypertension is a problem with the vessels. So you must understand the whole system for you to be able to come up with a diagnosis. But if you study them separately, it is usually very difficult. And I'm not saying that at the end of the day, you may not be able to, to, to understand it, but it is difficult. If we have an easier way, why don't we choose that way? So that's what we're doing. So systems are better because when patients present to you, they present with a systemic problem. When you're looking at a patient, you're not just looking at an organ alone. You're looking at a system. 
if a patient comes with a brain problem, it's not just that brain. The neurological system would have been affected in some way. If a patient comes with a kidney problem, it's not just the kidney alone. The urinary system would be in problem. If a patient comes with a, uh, with a problem of, uh, say, they have uh, polycystic ovarian syndrome, which is a problem of the ovary, it is not just the ovary that will be affected. The entire reproductive system, as well as the endocrine system, will also be affected. So it is better we study the we study medicine at a systemic level rather than studying it in the traditional way that look at it. You know, if you have puzzle, you're looking at each puzzle differently. But at the end of the day, when you would have put the puzzle together, it makes better sense for you. So what we're trying to do is to put the entire puzzle together so that it makes sense, right? And I hope um, this explanation goes a long way to help you and justify why we are choosing the systemic um, organ system to the, um, the traditional system. But anyway, we have, this is what we, we're gonna start with. And um, I'm hoping that um, it's gonna be, it's gonna be fun for all of you. So we will be starting on the 10th of December this, this year and go on break on the 17th and then we converge and come back on the 4th of, of uh, January. 2021. So um, that is it. I'm going to stop sharing this and um, I don't know if Mr. Arun has something to say. Mr. Arun? Yes, sir. I'm here only. <laughs> I was just listening to you very seriously so that I should learn something from it. All right, we'll learn from each other. Yes, anything, any contribution from any other person, Neati, you want to say something? Pova, Latifa, Shanair, anybody have anything to say? Sorry, um, good morning. I just have a question. All right, Joshua, yes, question. I just have a question concerning the practice of medicine. Aha, uh -huh. okay. Would that be um, just theory or would we have some practical? Because I already mentioned, um, it's how we're going to be doing physical examinations for persons, um, probably with diseases. So I'm wondering if, will that be something we just take in or would we have that experience? Um, good question, that very good question, brilliant question. Um, I think you are thinking what I'm thinking. Mr. Joshua, because somewhere in my brain, I am wondering how you can do a physical examination online because it is physical. So why would physical become virtual? I think there's some contradiction here. Unfortunately, COVID-19 has made so many impossible things possible, right? Medical education has never been studied virtually, but today, very sad, a lot of things today now are done virtually, including marriages done virtually, all right? So um, I, I think physical examination, um, we are trying to see how we can bring students to the university, um, bring, bring them in batches of maybe four or five, and then we have a patient in the university a simulated patient where we can do that. But in the meantime, for the benefit of our Indian students, uh, we would do it online. So we would have a patient and we focus the camera on that patient and the doctor who is in charge will do a physical examination on that patient. So the physical examination require you to uh, require the doctor to, you know, have the patient lying on bed and um, teach you step by step wise on how you take vital information from the patient 
And um, if you are to do a focused examination, like a cardiovascular examination, what are the things you are to watch out for? What are some of the signs you have to watch out for and some of the symptoms you have to watch out for? And what are some of the places you would want to touch and some of the places you want to do percussion or you want to palpate and you want to auscultate? So you will be there online seeing the doctor doing it. Sadly, you cannot have hands on your patient, but as long as it is done for you to see, you try as much as possible to mimic what you have seen with your brother and your, and your sister at home. Call them, take consent from them, tell them, well, I want you to pretend that you have a heart problem. I want you to lie on the bed and ask them, can I do a physical examination on you? And until they tell you, yes, go ahead, don't touch them because they will accuse you for assault, all right? So you have them lie on the bed and you try to repeat what the lecturer online would have done for you. In addition to that, we we'll also be sending videos of fiscal examination for you to see how the different fiscal examination is done and what to watch out for, the signs and symptoms you have to watch out for. When you have a patient that has a heart failure, what are the things you expect to see from a patient that have a heart failure? What are the things that you have to see in a patient that has a coronary heart disease? And what leads to these different things, all right? So Mr. Joshua, yes, most of these things we'll be doing will be virtual. Videos are gonna be very essential at this point. We'll send videos to you all. I'm going to create a Google Class for you all. Google Class is something that I have been using for my MD4 students. It's very wonderful. It exposes you to so many things. It's like class away from class, a physical class away from physical class. So the Google Classroom is what I'm going to create myself and Mr. Arun. I will discuss it with him because there are a few things I still have not really understood. Mr. Arun is a, is a, is a computer guru, so he's gonna help me through, through that, all right? Good. So any other question, please, if you have any concern, I know we're taking longer time than necessary, but I just want to ensure that everybody is satisfied before we start. Ask questions before we start the program. It might not be a question that is related to what we have spoken about. It might be some other questions that you are um, looking for an avenue to ask. This is the best opportunity to ask. Okay, I think um, this is it. Everybody is um, satisfied, that, um, satisfied with what we have shown them so far. Um, you look, we look forward to have you in first class and uh, first lecture on on the 10th of, um, of December with following that timetable that I've shown you. So we'll start with embryology of the heart and then the anatomy of the heart followed by the physiology of the heart. I'm looking forward to seeing everybody in class. Please, attendance is very, very important. You need 90% attendance to write final exam. Um, your big brothers and sisters in the big class, if you ask them, this is one of the problems I'm having with them. Some of them will play tricks, they're online. You can see that they're online, but their pictures are not, it's not shown. So they are busy doing other stuff. What I do to get those kind of students is I ask them specific questions. And if they don't respond, I know that they're not there and I mark them absent. So please do not start on a very wrong note. When class starts, ensure everybody is in the class. Please let, you have to be physically present, <laughs> virtually, you have to be present and um, stay until the end of the class. If you have internet problem, you text the lecturer that you're having some internet difficulties so that the lecturer knows how to deal with your situation. But I do not see any reason why anybody would not love to be in class. You have to be in class. I don't see, I mean, 
as a medical student, when I started, I had this enthusiasm. I want to always be in class. I want to hear new stuff. I want to learn new things. All right. I think that is the spirit that everybody should have. Please, please be in class. All right. All right. At this moment, I want to say a big good afternoon to everybody. Have a blessed day. And we're looking forward to seeing you in the classroom. Um, your individual lecturers will contact all of you and they will introduce, introduce themselves to all of you when the time starts. Have a wonderful day, all of you, and shalom. Thank you, sir. All right, bye-bye. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. All right, bye-bye. Call us and grab your seat at Lincoln American University.